Good morning and God bless you. Take your Bibles if you would please. Open them this morning to the book of Romans. Romans is in the New Testament. It is Paul's masterpiece, I believe, of the New Testament, of all of his writings, of his books of the New Testament. And we come to Romans chapter 3, very powerful chapter in the book of Romans. We're going to be looking at two verses for our text today as we move along. And with those of you that are with, with us right now by Facebook Live, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We're glad you're with us and good to have you uh, worship with us today. And thanks for letting us come into your home today live. And out of the 300 plus churches in this county, we are honored that you have chose us to worship with us today. So God bless you and thank you. And uh, get your Bibles open. And at the top, there's a link you can click on. It says something, Bible study, and click it on. And you can print out the study guide to study the Word of God with us this morning. Well, again, this is Easter Sunday Resurrection. But we could not have a resurrection without a death. Okay? 
And we're looking at the cross these past three weeks, service. This is number four. Tonight will be number five. As we're focusing on the cross, because it is the cross that saves a man. It is the death of Jesus that gives eternal life and everlasting life. It is the blood of Christ that forgives all sin and cleanses all sin and releases us from the penalty of sin and the power of sin is through the blood of the cross. Without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission. There would be no forgiveness. There would be no pardon. There would be no leasing from the power and the penalty of sin without the blood. Uh, we're going to take a closer look today at the blood. You see, because that's what saves a man. That's what gives a man salvation. That's what gives a man hope. And the world certainly is looking for hope. And the only hope for America, the only hope for the world, is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can give the drug addict, drug addict hope. He's the only one that can give the prostitute hope. He's the only one that can give the drunkard hope. He's the only one that can give a man or a woman with a bad temper, a foul mouth, and whatever else, hope. He's the only one that can give somebody that's bound in, in, in pornography and, and, and immorality and, and porn. He's the only one that can give hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what the world needs is a hope from the person who can give hope. Hope, and that hope is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's found in his death on the cross at Calvary. Resurrection Sunday is the confirmation of what Jesus did on Calvary. You understand that? Because Jesus said, you kill this body, and I will raise it up in three days. That was his word, and we always have a confirmation of the word. And on Sunday morning, he gave the confirmation of that word as he came out of, the live, out of the grave alive and victorious over sin, hell, death, the grave, and the devil himself. Hallelujah. Thank God for the resurrection, but thank God for the cross. Because the message today, ladies and gentlemen, is still the cross. That's the only thing that's going to save a man or woman, boy or girl, or give them eternal hope, everlasting hope, is the cross of Jesus Christ. So we're going to focus on that today. Follow along with me in our readings, if you would, in Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse number four, 24. Being justified, being what? Justified, standing righteous before God. You see, just as if you never sinned, saved, if you please. How? Freely, by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, through the purchase, the buying of Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. That's a big word. We'll look at it a little later. Through the faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission, the forgiveness of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. May we pray together. Our Father, we thank you, we praise you, we lift you up today. We give you glory and honor and praise. And we thank you for allowing us to have this day. Thank you we can still come to our church and meet and worship. Thank you that we can have this opportunity in our county, in our city, because of our officials and our governor that has seen fit to allow us to do this and, and give us this opportunity. And we thank God for that. We don't take it for granted. And we praise you for it, Lord. And we thank you for the men and women that are protecting us and keeping us safe. Lord, watch over them. We pray for this officer that has leukemia in the Ocala Police Department. God, we pray that you would do a miracle in his life. Father, that you would grant mercy and grace and raise him up and, and give him a cure for this leukemia. And when it's all said and done, we will give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray today for wisdom and on high. We pray for illumination of the Holy Spirit, that you would grant to us understanding, that we would grasp the truths of the Scriptures and then apply them in our lives as we need that wisdom to do so. Now, Lord, may your Holy Spirit be our teacher and our guide. May he guide us into all truth, lead us into truth. May he bring to remembrance the things that Jesus has said to us. Give us understanding and wisdom to apply it. And now, Father, we ask for that special anointing and power that comes over your servant today. Father, we ask that you would grant it to him and anoint him in this moment, in this hour, as we proclaim the message of the cross of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we'll receive it by faith, because we ask it in faith, believing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And praise the Lord. One of the most amazing truths of our faith today is that our hope is based on the sacrifice of Jesus. 
That, that, that's, our, that's our basis. Everything we hope for and everything we believe in, the cornerstone of our faith is the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Okay? That his death brings hope. Central to this story and central to the term of redemption is God providing a way of atonement by the shedding of blood. And we see all of this beginning even in the Old Testament and on into the New Testament. So let me just draw your attention briefly uh, to the Old Testament where we have to have the blood sacrifice for the atonement of sin. It all started with Abel. Do you remember Cain and Abel? They were the second two people on the planet. They were the sons of Adam and Eve. And it came time for offering time. It came time to present a sacrifice. And of course Cain came and brought the fruit of the land. It was the labor of his hands. And God rejected that sacrifice and that offering because you see folks it's not by works that we're saved it's by the blood of the lamb that we're saved and Abel offered a blood sacrifice for the redemption of sins and that was a picture of what yet was to come which would be the lamb of God the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and God started that all the way back in the book of Genesis so all the way through the Old Testament we have that in Genesis 4 4 and Abel uh, he also brought the, the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering because it was a picture that was yet to come all the way back. So you see, this wasn't something God made up, church. This was in the heart and mind of God before the foundation of the world of all of this, and God was revealing it and showing it all the way back in the garden with two uh, precious sons there and so forth. Then we move ahead in our story, and we come to Abraham and Isaac. And again, here's another picture of the sacrificial lamb that would be slain for the blood for the sins of man. And Isaac was, uh, Abraham was asked to offer Isaac his son on the altar. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, Father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire, the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. All the way back again in Genesis, a picture of the sacrificial lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we come to Moses. And we find something similar in Moses in Exodus 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Again, another picture of Jesus being the Passover lamb that would take away the sins of the world. And we see it all the way back in the beginning. Then we come to Aaron, the high priest. See how we're moving along? And so, and he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And by the way, propitiation has to do with the mercy seat. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, and that it is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do that, and, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Man, you got to understand Jesus is our mercy seat. you got to understand that he is our a sacrificial lamb. And then we come to the New Testament. You see, that was under the Old Testament. That was the Old Covenant. Old Testament covenant was under the blood. We come to the New Testament and Jesus said, I bring you a New Testament, a new covenant, and this is in my blood now. You see, oh, my blood. You see, we find Jesus, the Lamb of God, and it was the preparation of the Passover, and it was about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, behold your king. This is a trial that's going on. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he them unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. There was a time when Jesus started his public ministry, and John was baptizing at the Jordan River, and John was preaching a message of repentance. Repent and believe. Repent and believe. Then get baptized. 
Don't get the, don't get the cart before the horse. Let's get the order right, okay? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, all right? So make sure of that. And there he's baptizing, and he looks up, and he sees a figure. Now, you got to understand, John may have seen Jesus before. I don't know. Maybe seen him as a child, perhaps, because he was his cousin. So I'm sure they had some family get-togethers. And he sees Jesus, and he says, Behold, what did he call him? The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of of the world. And so John recognized him as that lamb. So I want us to first of all take a look this morning at the purchase of his blood. The purchase of his blood. Thomas Watson said this, and I quote, it costs more to redeem us than to create us. In creation there was but speaking the word. In redeeming us there was the shedding of blood. Costs more, ladies and gentlemen. So this purchase of his blood I want you, first of all, it redeems our life. The purchase of the blood redeems our life. You want to know, we're going to take a good look this morning, as briefly as we can, as how important the blood is. Now, I know as independent Baptists, we've always been accused of a bloody gospel. You got that right. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness. There's no pardon. There's no release. There's no setting free. Without the blood. Church, you got to have the blood. Simple as that. It redeems our life. Listen to Ephesians 1 7. Follow along with me now. In whom, that is in Christ, we have what, church? Redemption. And how did we get that redemption? Through his blood. What did it give us? The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Oh, praise God, I'm redeemed through the blood. I'm purchased through the blood. Blood. I've been bought with a price called the blood of Jesus Christ. That was the purchase part, the redemption. We find redemption is a releasing uh, affected by payment of ransom. Okay, that's redemption. Liberation produced by the payment of a ransom. Peter put it this way in a little different light in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as you know, say I know, what do you know? That you were not redeemed, purchased, released. Are you with me now? Because I just gave you the definition. With corruptible things as silver and of gold and of your vain conversation. That's your manner of living uh, received by the traditions from your fathers. But here it is. Peter makes it very clear. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, Peter uses the word redeemed. Paul used the word redemption. What's the word redeem? It means to release on receipt of a ransom, to liberate by payment of a ransom. In other words, Jesus paid for your sin. Jesus paid to give you a redeemed life. He purchased it. Not you. Not the church. Not a denomination. Not a faith. Not some guru. Not a preacher, not a priest, not a rabbi, not a cardinal, not a pope, not a bishop, not a, not a monk, not a Buddhist. No, no, no. It was Jesus Christ and him alone. He paid the price for your sin and my sin. And by the way, he's the only one that can. So quit looking and searching everywhere else. Just come to the cross. That's what it's all about. The message is still the cross. And that's what it is, my friend. It is still the cross. Well, not only does it redeem our life, it renews our life. The blood, the purchased blood renews our life. You know what it does? It gives us a new start. It gives us a new start. Now, I'm telling you, those that are watching and listening, television, radio, internet, YouTube, Facebook, and so forth, on your iPads and your tablets and, and, and your computers and all of that good stuff, praise God for all this electronic stuff. I love it. Because we give an opportunity to give the gospel out to everyone around the world. Last night when we were on Super 55 at 11 o'clock, and, and going into over 8 million homes in the state of Central Florida, they were live streaming it around the world. And they were hearing the gospel, Christ power at the cross. Oh, thank God and we praise God for that. And it will give you a new start that are watching and listening today. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that little preposition in is very important not on Christ, in Christ, is a new creature, a new creation. 
You want a new life? Come to Christ. You tired of your old life? You tired of your old sin? You tired of everything that's going on? You tired of being a drunk? You tired of being an alcoholic, a prostitute, a whoremonger? You tired of drugs? You tired of... Come to Christ today. The cross is the answer. The monkey's on your back. You're shooting needles in your veins and in your arms. Why not get a dose of Jesus? Why not come to the cross and get all of that taken care of? And you say, oh, preacher, you don't know how rotten I am. You don't know what sins I've committed. You don't know horrible crimes. I've done stuff that really nobody knows. But according to you, preacher, you'd say, but God does. That's right, he does. I love it when I had a jail ministry and we'd go to the jails and preach and talk to them. All the, all the inmates would always say, preacher, you don't understand. I'm innocent. They all say I'm innocent. And then they would say, and God is my witness. And I would say, you got that right. God was a witness to your crime. Amen. You need the Lord to change your life today. You need to come to Christ. You're sitting on a bedside with a needle ready to take your life. An overdose of drug, I beg you in Jesus' name, don't do it. Don't do it. He can save you. He can forgive you. He bought and paid for it with his precious blood on the cross of Calvary. You say, I've murdered people. Nobody knows but me and God. That's okay. He can forgive you of that murder. Because don't worry about murdering somebody that you may have murdered. I want to tell you, every one of us murdered Christ with our sins. When God nailed my sin to the cross, we killed the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't blame everybody else for it. You see, it wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the Jewish high priest and all that crap. It was my sin and your sin that God took and nailed it to his cross that day. And Jesus shed that precious blood. And as it flowed down Calvary, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. There's power in the blood, cleansing power in the blood, and He'll do it for you too. It's for everyone, but you have to come. I cannot do it for you. You have to come. A new start, a new life. Wow, all things, the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 22, and almost all things are by the law purged or purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Oh, my friend, you have to understand that, there is a, that there's neither release from sin of its guilt, their forgiveness or pardon, nor the remission of the due of the merit punishment for our sins apart from the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important. That's why we have to preach it. That's why Paul says we preach nothing but Christ and him crucified, buried, and the confirmation of the risen Lord. That's it's still the cross. It's the cross that's going to save America. Not Washington. Not the politicians. Not the, definitely not the new administration. Where's my signs Miss Eden made for me? Watch them words. Watch them words. I have to be careful so you don't shut me off. Things I can't say. Isn't that something in America? Yeah. It'd be the day that the pastor couldn't say what he felt or, pre or, or enjoy the First Amendment of the freedom of speech. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Yeah. He's coming and he's coming soon. The word purge there means to cleanse. It means a filth of impurity. It means to prune the trees and the vines uh, from useless shoots. And it's cleansed so it can produce fruit. Well, not only does it renew our life and give us a new start, but the purchase of the blood gives me new ownership. We have a new ownership. Oh, listen to what Now, church, you need to get a hold of this. You don't own yourself anymore. Okay, let's listen to what the Scripture says in 1 Corinthians 6.20. For ye are bought. The word bought means to be purchased, means to be paid for. It means to be made his own. You are bought with a price. Now because of that price, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. Now I belong to Jesus. Amen. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Amen? Okay. New ownership. 
our brother in Acts puts it this way, Dr. Luke. He says, take heed therefore unto yourselves, writing to the pastors and so forth, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you an overseer. That's what a bishop is. The office of bishop. I'm an overseer. Bishop of the flock, the church here. And what am I to do? I'm to feed the church of God. That's you. Just want to make sure you're with me. That's what we're doing. We're feeding you today. That God has made me an overseer. And I'm to take heed. And to feed the flock. Why? <laughs> Look what he says. Which he, that is Christ, hath purchased, bought with his own blood. You see, i got to take real good heed of the responsibility and accountability that's laid on me as a pastor to feed the flock and to feed the, the sheep with the correct doctrine, sound biblical doctrine, because why? Because you are brothers and sisters in Christ, and Jesus bought and paid for you, so I'd better feed you the right food. Praise God. New ownership. Well, that's the purchase of His blood. Let's look at the provision of His blood. In verse 25 of our text, the provision of the blood for whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, a covering, a, mo a mercy seat through the faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins. All right, let's take a look at this provision of the blood. First of all, I want you to know that God's righteousness is now satisfied by the blood of Christ. The only thing that would satisfy God's righteousness, church, was Christ's precious blood. He had to pay the price. That satisfied God's righteousness. You understand that? It was the blood. Why? Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. My blood would be useless. Yours, too. It wouldn't do anything. That's not going to help us. But Jesus' sacrifice pleased God's righteousness through His blood. You see, God provided it for us. God provided a lamb. God provided the way. See, it's all His. It's not ours. You need to understand that. I didn't die for you. The church didn't die for you. The Baptist faith did not die for you. No denomination did. No, no priest died for you. No preacher, no missionary, no evangelist. No bishop, no cardinal, no pope. Ladies and gentlemen, the pope is not infallible. He's a man. And we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. We've all gone out of our way and become unprofitable servants. And the Lord laid upon him the chastisement, the iniquity of us all on the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you see, it was his death, it was his blood that satisfied God. The word propitiation that Paul used there in verse 25 means a appeasing or satisfactory payment to satisfy. And here it's in reference to the mercy seat, the covering, the propitiation of our text. The word propitiation addresses the wrath of God. When we go to 1 John 2, 2, and we read that word again where we find it, it's referring to an offering, a sacrifice that Christ became the propitiation for me. He became my offering. He became my sacrifice. He became the substitutionary, atoning death of Christ on the cross. And his blood then was placed on the mercy seat. His blood covered my sins. I'm washed in the blood. I'm covered by the righteousness of God because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. When we go over to 1 John 4, 10, it talks about an atoning sacrifice. Not just a covering sacrifice, but an atoning sacrifice. A substitution. In other words, Jesus took your place. He took my place that day on the cross of Calvary. It should have been me that should have been crucified. Amen. I should have been crucified that day, you see, my friend. But oh, Jesus died, and he died alone. You got to understand that. The blood is powerful. It's powerful. It's important. That's why we still have it in our hymnals. That's why we sing in our Baptist hymnal about the blood of Jesus Christ. 
We haven't omitted it. That's why it's still in our Bible and not been omitted. As many of the new modern day versions have taken out the blood. You take out the blood, you got nothing. You got nothing. Oh my. I'm going to bring a message one of these days, continue to work on it. Just something that lightened my whole being of Jesus when they pierced his side and bl- water and blood flowed out. Now there's a medical term for that and certainly we could understand that. And, uh, and we think about when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and the born of water and born of the spirit and, and all through that. But I've been, be- I've be- have been beginning to trace back what that water was. And what it meant. All the way back into the Old Testament. It is phenomenal. I have a whole new look and understanding. When John saw the miracle. Of water flowing out of the blood. Out of Jesus' side. It was a pure miracle. And I'm going to show you all through the Old Testament what that meant and how it led up to Christ to the cross of Calvary. It is phenomenal. You're not not going to want to miss it. We'll announce it, let it be known when we're going to and it'll give you a whole new light and insight of what that meant. You see, because water throughout the Scripture church I gotta get off my message. Was for a cleansing and a washing. And if you go back and read the scriptures carefully, when God told Moses to strike the rock and water would flow, he told Moses, I will be on the rock. And when you strike the rock, out will come cleansing water. Jesus is the living water. And when they struck him with the spear, they struck the rock. Because Jesus said, I am the rock. And out from that came cleansing water. For we are washed and cleansed. Washed water was always his washing. And then, of course, the precious blood of Christ that forgives us. Oh, hallelujah. Stay tuned. We'll bring this one soon. Hey, that rhyme, put that in my poem book, all right? Amen. So we have the provision. So not only this provision that it satisfied God's righteousness, but it's, it's our standing now, church, is secure. Because of the blood of Christ, and Him providing that sacrifice that appeased God's righteousness, you and I are now secure in Christ. Come on, talk to me, church. I'm glad I'm secure in Christ. Man, once saved, always saved. Man, I can't fall from grace or lose my eternal salvation. God would be an Indian giver. I'm in the Father's hand, can't get plucked out. I'm eternally secure. My goodness, folks, if, I, if I'm not and I don't accept that, that is, a, that is a, an insult to God that Jesus can't secure me. That his death and his resurrection and his cross and all his suffering and his blood, if that wasn't enough to secure me, then what is? Oh, praise God, I'm secure in Christ today because of the provision of his blood. Therefore, as by, by the offense of one judgment, that's Adam, okay? It came upon all men to condemnation, judgment. And Romans 5, 8 says, wherefore by one man sin, that's Adam, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned, amen? But in Romans 5, 18, Paul goes on and says, now, but even so by the righteousness of one, that's Jesus Christ, The free gift came upon all men, watch this, unto justification of life. 
saved, justification, made righteous as we stand before God because of one man, of what he did on the cross, his righteousness, that appeased God's righteousness, then it was imputed to me for his righteousness, so I stand righteous today before God. Not because of my righteousness, but because of his. Why? Because of what one man did. I was over here at one time, and I was under the condemnation and the judgment of sin because my wonderful 4444, a hundred few generations ago, forefather sinned by the name of Adam in the garden. But then there was a second Adam that came on the scene. Oh, hallelujah. And he went to the cross, and he died, and he satisfied God's righteousness, and he is the righteousness of Christ. He became my propitiation. He became my covering. He became my mercy seat. He became my righteousness, and God called clothed me in his righteousness so now I stand righteous before God Almighty because of what Jesus did on the cross. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God for the blood. Amen. And that little one's doing great over there. All this excitement and noise going on. She probably, oh, she was waving the bulletin a while ago so I thought it was one of them white hankies. You know, preach it, pastor, preach it. I'm with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can I get a hallelujah today? This is Resurrection Sunday. I'll tell you what, what a beautiful baby. She's smiling. She's with the preacher. I know. Hallelujah. Amen. She's got the gift, brother. I tell you. Oh, praise God. I got to hurry. We got to go. We got to finish this up. All right. Amen. Don't say amen to that. What, did you hear that? When we're done, you all can be dismissed. And I will start that message number two, and she'll be right here to hear it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Woo! We'll have a nice talk on the way home in the car. <laughs> the purchase of his blood. Amen? Redeems our life. Are you satisfied today? It renews your life. It gives you a new start. It gives you new ownership. Then that provision was made by the Lord Jesus Christ. It satisfied God. Hallelujah. It secured my position in Christ. Now let's talk about peace. Peace. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Amen. Peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. Amen. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace coming down. From the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love, peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down. From the Father above. Oh, it sweeps over my spirit. Do you have that peace today? That peace comes from his blood. Let's take a look at it and we're finished. Share three wonderful truths with you. The peace of his blood. Matter of fact, Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you the peace of his blood. Now let me tell you something right now. Church, those of you that are saved, you can have this peace today. Today. Right now. That's in your study notes. Write it down. Don't miss it. A, peace today. How do I have that? Colossians 1.20. And having made what, church? Peace. How did you make peace? Through the blood of his cross. By him, that is Jesus, to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, that's the Father. I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. You see, you can have peace today. Because of the blood of Christ. Now there's a lot of believers that don't have peace. We've lived in a world for a year that's different and it continues to stay different it's not normal it's unnormal and people are looking for peace they're under stress turmoil nervous 
uncertain, I'm telling you, you can have peace today. And that peace comes through His blood of the cross. Peace, peace. I've got peace like a river. Oh, there's peace in the midst of the storm. The apostles were involved almost in a hurricane on the lake, the Sea of Galilee. And a massive storm rolled up. They call it the Euclanda. I would just pronounce it a hurricane. And here comes Jesus. He's sleeping in the boat. Now, I've been in a typhoon out at sea. I don't sleep in boats in typhoons. I chum the water. You all know what that means. Just make sure you're not in the water when I'm chumming, because then you're going to be shark bait. And the boys feared for their life and went down and said, Master, carest not that we perish? And he walked out onto the boat and stood up on the bow and he said, Peace. Peace. The wind stopped and the sea went flat immediately. And they stood back and they marveled in amazement. What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey his voice? What storm is turmoiling in your life today? What uneasiness and unsettledness are you going through? And you just, I have no peace. And I want peace. I'm telling you, you can have peace today. It's up to you. Not only can we have peace today, I like this one. We can have peace forever. We can have peace forever. John 3, 16, quote it with me. Let's say it all together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, oh, that who? that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, you can have peace everlasting. See, you can have peace for everlasting. That is if you know Jesus. See, you got to know Jesus, folks. You got to come to the cross. Put it this way in Romans 5, 9. Paul says, much more. Say that with me. Much more. Being now, being now, what tense is that? Present tense. What are we? We are justified. We are acquitted. We are bought into a right relationship. We are saved. We are made righteous by His blood. We shall be saved, hallelujah, from the wrath through Him. Praise God. 2 Peter 3, 9. Ah, oh, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but He's long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You've got to come to a place of repentance. You've got to come to the cross, and you need to repent of your sins and let Jesus wash you and cleanse you with His water and His precious blood that gives us forgiveness of sin releases us from the power of sin and from the penalty of sin and from the domain of sin. Oh, hallelujah for the blood. Praise God. That's why we have a bloody gospel. Amen? Oh, hey, precious Lord, amen. Well, let's guess what. Now, here we go. You be praying because here's the invitation. Here's the invitation. There's peace for all who believe. There's peace for all who are willing to believe. Are you willing to believe today? I hope so and trust so. He that believeth on the Son of God, listen to me now. What's the key word there? Believeth. On the Son of God, who do we believe on? The church? Denomination? No. Believe on the Son of God, hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. I use this in soul winning all the time. And this is the record. Don't miss this. Here's the record. That God hath given to us eternal life. What kind of life? Eternal life. 
and this life is in his Son. Now, it doesn't get any more black and white than this. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You either got life or you don't. If you got Jesus, you got life. If you don't got Jesus, you don't have life. If you got Jesus, you're going to have peace, unspeakable and full of glory, and a home in heaven, and your name written in the Lamb's book of life, and glory, and everything that's affordable to you. But if you don't have Jesus, you don't have any of the above that I just said. Simple. And then look what John says. These things, what things? This is the record. This is the record. And he goes back, he's probably quoting over in John chapter 21, where he said, and these things have I written unto you, what things? The whole book of John, which is all about the deity of Christ and the Son of God and the love of God. He said, these things that I have written unto you, uh, said, that you may believe. That you may believe. That you may have eternal life. And how do I, here it is, I've written these things unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And Peter said, God is not willing, that's His will, that any should perish, but all come to repentance. And if you're willing to come to repentance, God hears you. Because it's His will that you perish not and be saved, and come to know the Lord, and born again. But you got to come His way, church. Those of you that are listening and watching, you got to come His way. It's not the church way. It's not the Catholic way. It's not the Protestant way. It's not any other denominational way. It's not the Mohammed's way. It's not Buddha's way. It's not Confucius' way. You understand that? You understand? It's not Islam way. No, it's not anybody's way. It's Jesus' way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. You want to get to heaven, you got to come by the way of the cross. You want your sins forgiven, you got to get washed in the blood of the Lamb, which means you got to come to the cross. Now, I've told you the truth, and I've given you the truth from the Word of God, and we want you to get saved and be born again, and to be washed and cleansed and come to Christ he that hath the Son hath life, but he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And the Scripture goes on and says that he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, for the wrath of God abideth on him. Now you want to get out from under the wrath of God, I'd get down to the cross right now. I wouldn't hesitate and put it aside. I'd take care of business right now. Because you have no guarantee of tomorrow. You have no guarantee of even the rest of the day. All you have right now is what your heart's beating and what you're breathing. And that could stop just like that. But look at the deaths that have happened this week. Lady killed on the freeway. Bike accident killed. Family burned up. Uh, some more killings that took place in Orlando this week. Shootings. Folks, you don't know how much longer you have to live. You don't know when there's going to be a drive-by shooting. You don't know when somebody's going to run you off the road or plow into you. You don't know if your heart's going to stop beating. That's why you can't put it off. What will you do with Jesus? He paid it all. He did it all for you. All you have to do is believe that's not hard. Ret repent of your sin, turn from your sin, and come to Christ and ask Him to save you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one looking. Our Father, we thank You for today. We bless You, Lord. Now we ask You to deal with hearts that are here and those that are watching and listening. My friend, if you've never trusted Christ and never been saved, born again, now's the time to do so. Now's the time to come to Calvary time to come to the cross and we pray that you would do that there's only one way to heaven and that's through Jesus there's only one way to have your sins forgiven to be pardoned, to be released, to be cleansed and that is through the blood of the cross you got to come by the way of the cross would you be willing to do that today, right now wherever you're at, wherever you're watching 
Would you do that right now? God doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to repent and come to Him. Jesus desires that all men would be saved. God wants to save you today through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to be saved today. We love you. God loves you even much more. He wants to save you. Friend, no matter what you've done, where you've been, who you are, there's no limit to God's salvation. There's no limit to His grace and forgiveness. It's free for all who are willing to come. Jesus paid it all. Would you be willing to come to Christ today? We're going to pray right now and help you. Now, it's not the prayer that saves you. Those are words communicating with God. What saves you is putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross of Calvary. That's what saves you. And we're going to do that right now. The Bible says if we're willing to confess, believe, call, and receive, we can have eternal life, everlasting life. And we're going to do that right now. Pray with me. Simply pray this. Dear God, that's right, go ahead. Here in the auditorium as well, those of you that are watching and listening, I confess with my mouth, you are the Lord from heaven. I confess that I'm a sinner, and I've sinned against you, God. And I ask you to wash me and to cleanse me and forgive me. He will, my friend, he will. I do now believe that Jesus died on the cross just for me. I believe he paid my sin debt. He took my place that day on Calvary. I believe he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And so right now by faith, I do call upon you, Lord Jesus, and receive you into my heart and life to be my Lord and my Savior and to take me to heaven someday when I die. And I thank you, dear Christ, for hearing my prayer and answering it and giving to me eternal life, everlasting life. And I pray this prayer in Jesus' name and faith believing. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching and tuning in with us today. I trust that many of you have come to Christ, had a new look at Jesus' blood, and what it means and what it meant. And we thank you for joining with us. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And until we meet again, just remember one thing. God loves you, and so do we. God bless you. Thank you.